Hi, my name is Cindy Rang from the Fabric Patch in Ephrata, Washington, and I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes about how to make chenille. So the chenille process, what it actually is, if you think about it, is that you've got your weft fabrics, uh, weft threads, and your warp threads. So everything, all of your fabric is woven like this, right? So um, if you were to cut here, you would have all of these shreds of uh, dangling threads on one side. If you were to cut here, you would have um, shreds of fabric on the top side. But if you cut bias, that's what gives you those tiny little threads that stick up and that's what chenille is. So what you do is you're just going to sew on the bias and cut in between to release those threads. Um, oftentimes when somebody makes chenille, when they do that first step, it looks horrible. It's going to look horrible until those threads burst, until the fabric bursts and loosens and that's what actually makes chenille. So once you get it done, wash it, maybe wash it a couple times, it'll look fabulous and I'll kind of show you this here. So we've talked about what it is, so let's talk about the type of fabric you would use. Um, people like to use batiks because batiks are so beautiful on the um, um, top side and the bottom side, but the problem is that to make a batik fabric, it goes through so much um, in terms of the process, even with adding wax to it, that it takes about a dozen washes before all of those threads will burst and chenille. It is beautiful, but uh, probably not worth all of that extra effort to um, to get it to that pretty stage. Save batik for like your raw edge applique and um, put all of that extra additive um, to, to work for you. Um, cotton fabric works great, of course, but what happens with quilt store quality fabric is you've got a 60 thread count, so you've got a pretty tight weave with your fabric, and so it, it will burst, it takes about three washings, and of course remember that you've got a right side and a wrong side. Um, flannel is going to work a little bit better because you're already working with a thread that's a little bit bigger around, and it's going to burst a little bit easier. But again, with flannel, you've still got a right side and a wrong side. The reason that that's important to note is that again when those threads burst they're basically going to stand up. So you'll see the pretty green on one side but you're going to see that color um, on the other side and you'll see that thread standing up like that and we'll look at these examples in a second. One that works fantastic is Osnaberg. Osnaberg is basically a very loose weave fabric you would not use in quilting um, but it bursts very, very easily, and what happens is it makes a really pretty chenille when you use it because it just gets kind of luscious and it's a little thicker thread. But my personal favorite to use is wovens, um, just for all of the, the right reasons. Woven fabric does not have a right or a wrong side. This is the inside, this is the outside. It's exactly the same because it's exactly as the name implies, it's woven. So it's colored threads, it's not colored uh, printed fabric. It's each of these threads are woven through here. So you can see that when you chenille it, it's going to look like that. You're not gonna have a right or wrong side, you're going to have little bursts of brown, little bursts of light green, dark green. It is absolutely beautiful. If you're going to go through the effort of the chenille, it's nice just to go ahead and just pick the right fabric right off and use a woven. There's lots to choose from. Janet Nesbitt from One Sister Designs uses them a lot. So these are two out of her collection. Um, sometimes you'll see some from Moda. They'll add wovens to some of their collections. Um, but we really, really like the diamond textiles. We have lots of diamond textile um, woven fabric and some of them have a brushed side um, and so you can use them for anything if you are not using them for chenille if you have leftover pieces obviously this is a really good quality cotton you can use it in in um, any quilt that you want to it's just that it's super nice when we're doing um, chenille all right so we've talked about that let's go ahead and talk about the process itself so I have a couple examples here of what not to do and why not. So this is the one I was talking about with flannel. So you can see that this is this beautiful flannel, but as soon as it starts to be chenilled, that's really a lot of what you're going to see is you're going to see the wrong side. Um, so you do want to be careful with that. And this is, of course, it's been sewn and cut. It hasn't been washed. So at this point, it still doesn't look so cute. 
These are some fabrics that you would not use. This is polyester. So if, if you feel like you just want to use a bunch of leftover stuff, be careful because polyester is not going to chenille. It's not going to fray properly. This one is a flannel, but again, it's only been washed once. But if you only put one pretty layer of the flannel on top, and then you've got white or something underneath it, keep in mind that what you're going to end up with is a stripe. Does that make sense? Because all of these are going to stand up. Um, this is a woven. Look at the difference. And this is only, this whole piece was washed one time. So look at the flannel, took a little bit. Polyester didn't do it at all. This, I'm not sure what this fabric was, but uh, anyway, there's a whole lot of layers there. Not a whole lot happened, but the, the woven fabric is beautiful and it's beautiful through and through because you can see all of those individual threads. This is an example of why we want to stay on the bias because on this, this was just a circle. So if we do a circle, you can see that where we were on the bias, it's a beautiful chenille. When we were, where we were on the warp or the weft part of the thread, that's all you see is shreds of thread. So that's why you always want to be on the bias. Here's another example. This one was done on the straight of grain and it's gonna look like that constantly. Every time you wash it, you're gonna get more of those. It's never going to chenille because all that's happening is all of those threads that are going this way are all going to come off. So not good. Um, here's some. So this is how we do it. You can go ahead and layer your pieces. So let's say that you've taken a heart template and you've cut all of these out and you've layered them. Um, I usually suggest that you do at least three layers. Um, you really don't need to do more than that. Um, this one is four layers um, and it's pretty full but three layers are equally beautiful. So you go ahead and you put your layers down. This is this cute sheep. You can find this pattern online. Um, there's also a tree in the pattern. And so what we did was we just put some four patches in here. And again, look at the difference. This is a woven fabric. Look how beautiful that is, even in a rag quilt. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, you don't really, here we've got some flannels in there, but again, you can see the wrong side of the flannel and that's what gives you the white fleck in there, whereas this is just threads. So you take your image, you lay it down where you want it to be, and then you go ahead and make sure you've drawn a 45 degree angle. And then you go ahead and sew through all of those layers onto your block. There's a foot that I like to use. It's a wing foot. Uh, we sell faff machines, so this one fits a faff. Um, if you sew on a different machine, you might just check and see if they have something like this. But what's super nice about it is that when you go ahead and you sew your 45 degree angle, um, sew on your line, you have a line that then you can go ahead and spin around, and then you can follow that line to sew your next one. Follow that line to sew your next one. And you can sew, as far apart as you want. You know, I tend to do about a half inch, I think looks good. You can do it a little bit closer if you want. You can do it a little bit farther apart. I would suggest that you just sort of um, experiment a little bit. So if you're doing the little images and sewing those down, just make sure that you've pinned your outside edges pretty well and that you've gone, you've started in the center. Um, if you start on the edge, things will shift just a little bit and it'll look a little bit weird. So make sure you start right in the center when you start going. If you're going to do a different piece that maybe you're going to cut up later, um, we suggest that you leave about a quarter of an inch on the outside edge because it's gonna make it a little bit easier to cut. Um, we haven't talked about that step yet. So this one, this is a pot holder. So they look like this when they're done. So you can see this one's been washed. And so all you have to do is you can layer, you see that there's three different pieces there. There's a black flannel, a red flannel, and a brown flannel. Just pick kind of a cool fabric that you want to use on the outside edge. And then what you do is, um, so it looks like this. You can also do just an orphan block. If you have a block left over here, again, this one is just a cool fabric, but put your orphan block down. If you're going to use it as a pot holder, we put a little bit of a cotton batting, and then we put our insulated, the, the Thinsulate batting. And then again, here's our three layers. So we're gonna lay this down, layer it together, start with our 45 degree angle, and then we're just going to again use our foot and sew through all of those. After we've sewn through all of those, it's going to look like this. Then 
you have to cut it. And this is really the, the best part. If you take your scissors and you cut between each of those layers, you're going to make it through maybe three and then you're going to quit. Trust me, you're not gonna to wanna to do it. It's very difficult to get your scissors in there and um, your hands are gonna be super sore. So they've made this, it's a chenille cutter. I'm gonna tell you straight up, it's $35, but it is the best money ever spent. It's fantastic the way that it works. So depending upon um, how big your seam is, you've got different blades here. So you might have a teeny, teeny, tiny if you've decided to sew your chenille really close together or you have your biggest one, it doesn't make any difference. And then it's got a blade in here and you change your blade the same way that you do your rotary cutter. It's just a basic 45, um, no, it's a 60. Well, there's a blade replacement, I think it's a 60. Um, so anyway, the blade sits in there, but the blade doesn't roll the way that a normal rotary cutter blade works. What happens is it's gonna kind of stay there. So as you put this through here, you'll feel it and it kind of slices. And then you'll just, as you go through, it just cuts each one, super, super simple. If you feel like your blade's getting a little bit dull, then all you do is you just turn it. It just clicks and you've turned it, so now that dull spot is up here, and now we're gonna cut on another sharp, sharp spot. And you turn it again and turn it again. I turn these all the time, and until pretty soon when you, you, know, you have different spots at different places, it is time to change it. I think I've had this for two, mm, probably two years, and I think I've only changed the blade once. So anyway, money well spent makes it super easy to cut those in there. After you've cut those, it's time to wash it. This one has been washed once. It was the exact same fabrics. But again, you can see, you know, this looks like this is mostly going to be beige. But obviously what you're going to see is those fabrics are going to stand up and you're going to see the other layers that you have there. One thing to remind you, and I may not, I may have just went right over this, is that we're going to chenille these top three layers, but you're going to have a base layer that's not chenilled. So all of these are going to stand up, but this is your, your background piece. So see, I've cut through three layers and I've left one there and that's kind of the background. So you can see as this is washed, see I'm going to have the brown, the orange, and the white is going to stand up and that's my background little piece. And that's what you see here, is you'll see, there's my background, just some weird blue. And then here's my black, my red, and my brown. So this all stands up. Um, okay, so that's the basic way. And one thing too is if you're just gonna kind of play around, just making a quick little pot holder is kind of a fun thing to do because it'll help you to kind of get that down and understand how everything works. And again, the key to it is making sure that you're at a 45 degree angle. Since the key is at a 45 degree angle, the other thing is that you don't have to be all one way if you don't want to. You can mix it up a little bit. <clears throat> as long as you're doing 45, it doesn't really matter. So you can be all kinds of fancy if you want to do that, and that's fine too. Um, so I'm gonna show you one other technique and then I'm gonna show you some quilts. This is, um, this stuff here is chenille it. So this is super fun, so, oh. It doesn't come like this, that's my bag. Um, it comes like this. It comes in, this is a 3 8 inch and it comes uh, 25 yards. This one is 5 8 and it comes 40 yards. This is like $12, this is like $16. And what it actually is, is it's strips of chenille. So I tried making my own. This was, I went ahead and took some cotton fabric and I measured out a half an inch and I cut it on the bias and made these strips. Um, yikes, let me just say, this is a super good deal. Um, because the other thing too is now here, I'm dealing with my 60 square, really nice quilt store quality fabric. This stuff, they've made it for chenilling. So you can see that it's a bit loose weave right there, right? And they've made it that way because they know that what's going to happen is that all of these fibers are going to burst and stand up. What's fun about this is that you can layer different colors. You can do three or four, um, of the same thing. You can add a couple colors in there. You can kind of do whatever you want to do. There is a foot. The foot looks like this. And it's actually called a chenille foot. And again, we sell faff machines. So this is the foot that we have. It's a 22, 16. It's a $16 foot. It's fantastic. So all you do is you just snap this on, you weave this through, or you weave through you know, your three colors, whatever it is that you're going to use. 
weave that through and then you can see that your needle is going to come down here and you're just going to stitch right in the center which makes it really nice and you can just guide this around this was just a little block that we did as a practice and so you can see that we just did our stems we kind of did, went around here and then we layered a pink and a white to do the flower so you can make your own designs you can kind of play with this you might find um, a panel this is a really good example this is a Susie B panel this one would be really fun just to go ahead and take maybe um, some pink maybe take some yellow maybe some green you could just add whatever you want to you could even just do it just in the border if you wanted to but it would be really fun if you had a really cute panel maybe you didn't want to chenille it you just wanted to add a little bit of bonus stuff to it so it's kind of a nice option um, the other thing that you can do with it is you can use it as a little border treatment or binding treatment so you can see that we just put a couple layers here this is what it looks like because it hasn't been washed and then this is well actually this was just sort of brushed with this soft toothbrush it hasn't been washed yet so you can see what that looks like the other thing that you can do this was just a quick little quilt just a bunch of squares and this is just one layer and this has been washed it was washed one time so this is one layer of that strip chenille so you can just lay that on top so again sew through using your foot it makes it nice and straight and gives just kind of a fun little extra bonus to it so you can find these on our website and they come in lots of different colors and if you go to the chenille it there's a section if you go to www.fabricpatch.net go to shop online and then I think it's in the notions tab find the chenille it um, I think that there's a link to this video will be a link to this video there and then there's also the foot is there there's also a download for this free pattern it's just a Christmas tree um, that's kind of cute um, but there's the drawing and I did three layers of the evergreen color and I did it in the 5 8 size you could do it smaller if you wanted to I, then I went ahead and sewed buttons because then you can use it as an advent calendar and just hang your little ornaments um, on it and make your little uh, background. Um, all right, so that's this, that's this. I'm gonna just show you a couple things here. So this, this is our friend Erica Plank. She has this pattern, and again, she's changed it. This exact version is no longer available. Now you get a pattern, um, and you'll see it on our website under patterns, but um, there's this, and then there's also a tree. A really good seller. Um, the sheep is so cute. Um, and then again, this is a really good example of what wovens will do. Your other thing is you can do all kinds of different shapes when you're putting things on things. Um, I think it's usually easier just to lay this down and stitch. If for some reason you decide to cut something out, you can sew around the edge, but notice that it gives kind of a funny little texture to it. So my suggestion is that if you're going to cut out an image and put it down, just stitch within that little groove to stitch it down. And I think it looks a little bit better. Um, the other kind of fun thing that you can do is you can take panels. So we have a couple examples here. This one is also um, Susie B's. We love their panels because they're so large. This is a one yard panel, so it's a, what is it, a $9 panel. It's a sheet. We have it in, it comes in a blue background, a pink background, or a green background. And it's really nice because it just takes three panels. Um, this one also then has the backing fabric on it and the binding. So it's pretty inexpensive and super luscious. And all we did was we took, I'll show you how you do it. This one is their cat, equally cute. So all you do is you take your three panels um, and then you just layer them all right side up. And then you take your pin and you're just going to start in the center and you find a specific mark. So it's kind of like if you've ever done um, um, stack and whack where you pin all of your layers together identical this is done the same way so we're just going to go to the corner right here so we can see that there's a little corner and then I'm going to flip this up find that exact same spot put the pin in right there flip up the next one find that exact same spot put the pin in there and secure this pin and then I'm going to do that with another one I might find this black dot go through find that black dot that black dot put that pin in there 
come over, find the edge of this. And so anyway, you're just gonna put these pins and you don't have to go crazy. You know, I would put a pin about, you know, five inches apart just to make sure everything is nice and secured. And then decide if you're going to chenille the whole piece or like the lamb here, are you just going to chenille just the lamb um, or just the cat? I'd probably do just the cat. You could even go around and decide not to do the bee if you wanted to. So all you're gonna do is again, you're going to start in the center. So we've drawn our 45 degree angle and then you would backstitch, right? Because if you're just going to do this and you're starting your stitch here, you don't want that to start coming up. So backstitch, sew your little stitch, backstitch, come over because of course you've got your little wing foot and so your wing foot will measure for you. And what's nice about that, I've lost my wing oh, foot, oh here it is. What's nice about that is then you have nice equal stitches. It's better than drawing all of those lines. So this is, um, and what is this foot? Probably also 16, $15, um, inexpensive, super, super nice. Um, anyway, so after you sew all of those down, you're going to backstitch, backstitch. It's gonna take a bit of time, depending upon how far apart you do it. Um, after you've done that, you're just going to cut those apart, wash it, you're good to go. Um, you could go ahead and sew through this, the batting and the backing. I would not recommend it. I think what you should do is just chenille this, wash it, then go ahead and put it on. It probably doesn't need batting. This one doesn't have batting. We did put the flannel on the back because now we've already got all of those layers on there. Um, and then we've just quilted it because then we just quilt it around the outside edge and put the binding on it and it's all done. Um, so these are panels and you can even do different panels. This one is a Christmas tree panel. And this one was just to see, you know, what else things look like. This one we chenilled the whole thing, but we did that whole um, go this direction, then go this direction. As long as you're doing a 45 degree angle, it works out great. You can also do smaller things and do a pillow. So this one is a panel. This was a Clothworks panel and it's just a cute little snowman. So we did um, one part on one side and the other part on the other side, the other part of the panel. So you can really play around with it. You can make pot holders, full size quilts. I've seen these as rugs. I would hate to step on it, but I've seen it that way. Um, you can do it for little embellishments for a quilt, pillows. It's a lot of fun. Um, it does take a bit of fabric uh, because of course you're going through three layers plus your base layer. So it does take a little bit of fabric. There are options to buy your own chenille. We have a, a video about that called, um, I think it's just called What is Chenille or What is Vintage Chenille? And you can see um, those, those types of chenille that are available. All right, I hope you have fun making chenille. If you have any questions, be sure and email us and check back.